Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today in part 4 of the series about the Yaeso FT221 we will continue our alignment but first we have to check or repair the PLL. At the end of part 3 we have seen that there is maybe a problem in the PLL, maybe a misunderstanding from my side, maybe someone has tampered with it. Anyhow we have to check the PLL and then we can continue. So let's start. First, some paperwork is necessary to see how the PLL works. The central part of the PLL unit is the VCO. The VCO operates from 133.3 to 137.3. This depends upon the version, whether it's an European, Japanese, US version or so. But this is a central VCO, which is controlled by the PLL loop. The output of this um, VCO is fed via two buffers. I think I have here a different version. We will see to the RX and TX mixer. And this frequency is always 10.7 MHz below the operating frequency. Now in principle, if you add 10.7, you come to 144 to 148 when we add uh, 500 kHz. So this is the output to the RX and TX mixer. Here we measure the frequency. This part is also fed through this buffer to the mixer from the local board. There are <coughs> fixed frequencies fed to the mixer. These are the frequencies which are selected by the band selector. These are crystals for the different bands. Here we have the mixer. And when we make the difference between the 133 and 125.3, we have a difference of 8 MHz, which is filtered through this low pass. And here we have the frequency from the VFO, 8 to 8.5. <coughs> and this is compared with this comparator. And this uh, supplies a DC voltage. Here we measure the tuning voltage, which is fed directly to the varicap, to the reactor diode, which controls the frequency. So this frequency is always 8 to 8.5 MHz above the frequency from the local board. And these are fixed frequencies. This is a principle of the loop. Here we have the unlock detection when there is some signal <coughs> detected here via this thyristor. When there is no uh, stable condition, the thyristor is always triggered. The moment I don't understand how it works in detail, and this makes a, a permanent signal, and this triggers the circuit here. It makes the unlock detection, which causes the LED in the uh, S meter to to flash. This is only uh, a part of the PLL. The most important thing for us is here the output of the RX TX mixer. We measure the frequency here. I will connect the frequency counter here to measure the 133. And we measure here the DC voltage, which we have seen is a little bit high, should be lower. Maybe I have to uh, realign here the coil or do some other measurements. By the way, you see here a second diode. Here is a, a very cap also and a very cap. And this is connected to this second tuning voltage here and here. And this is the voltage controlled by the range switch, by the band switch. This is an auxiliary tuning, which always <coughs> gives an additional uh, tuning to the oscillator and also to the band filter to optimize the uh, selection. Maybe we have to align also this voltage. I did it according to the manual, so we see how it works. So let's check this DC voltage. I will do it with a scope. I do not use any voltmeter. Makes no sense. A digital or analog voltmeter here. We have to see whether it's a stable DC voltage, whether the output here is a true DC voltage. And then of course here we connect the counter. Here we have the setup. The frequency counter is connected. This is a frequency counter to the output, as we have seen, to the RX-TX mixer. Here we have an, of the other side connected the scope. And here we can read the DC voltage. Hope you can see it. 5.28 volt DC. It should be a little bit less according to the uh, alignment procedure. We should be in the range of 4.5 volt DC. Okay, that's not so bad. I'm on the band 144 and the utmost left position until the 
BFO locks, we have a frequency of 133.21. We should have 300. We have 200 something. And the voltage is 5.17 volt. And when I increase the voltage, we can see the voltage slowly increases and the frequency also. And when I go to the zero point, exactly to 144.0, the frequency should be 133.300. We have 229. The error is less than one kilohertz. That's okay. And we still have a, a DC voltage, as we can see on the screen of the scope. Yeah, as you can see it. Sorry about the arrangement here, but I don't have a second camera. And I don't buy a second one. It's an overkill. Don't need it. And when I increase, for example, 144.5, the frequency jumped 500 kilohertz up, should be 800 instead of 300. We still have 5.26 volt. 145, we have 134.300. Next one is 45.5 and so on. And all bands are okay. And when I go to 147.5 and we have zero, let's uh, um, calculate 10.7 megahertz down, 136.8. 136.7987 something and when I go to the maximum frequency I go here 500 kilohertz up you see the voltage increases a little bit I'm beyond the 500 148 should be uh, 137.3, we have 137.376, we are 80 kilohertz above. Yes, that's okay, 80 kilohertz above. Or well, 90, but this is not true. Let's go to zero on the scale. Frequency should be 148. You subtract 10.7. And that is true here. And we have no oscillations. That's okay. Mode VFO. There's one crystal installed. Let's check the crystal frequency. 37.275. Okay. It's, it's shifted 25 kilohertz down. This is a crystal. And this is a VFO. Okay. This 475 kilohertz from any band setting. Okay, obviously now I can say the PLL is okay. I will do some checks more and find out whether we have a stability problem, but in general it works. I only try to get down the uh, tuning voltage a little bit. But in general it looks rather good in the moment. Now it's time to check the transistor, the DC amplifier in the PLL loop. We have measured the voltage here at TP01. It's a little bit too high. Okay, here we have this pot. We swapped by a new one. And this sets the bias on the source connection of this transistor. We are measuring the voltage on the drain. This is the power supply, 22K drain resistor. And here in the source path there is this um, trim pot. And the input is a DC voltage derived from the uh, PLL comparator, phase comparator. And here we have the output from the two diodes, which goes to the gate. This transistor is a so-called depletion type. That means we need, we need a negative gate voltage or the gate is grounded. We need a positive source voltage, which is generated via this path here. We discussed it. I will connect a, an AF signal into this connection here, 10K, 10K. I will add via a third 10K resistor, an audio signal, one kilohertz sine wave or so. This goes straight through to the gate. And here on the uh, drain, we will check whether we have the 
uh, amplified signal and what the voltage deviation, the maximum voltage and minimum voltage is and how it is affected by this trim pot, whether we have here any problems with linearity or stability or so. For this purpose, we can see it here. I connected another 10K resistor. This point where the two 10K resistors are, these are the two 10K resistors. Here we have the transistor. The trim pot is here. It's a little bit distributed. Here are the two diodes under the yellow tubes. And I slip over it this isolation hose to prevent any shorts. And here we have the input where I can connect the signal generator. Before we can start our test, um, we had to unsolder this anti-junction transistor. It's not a thyristor, it's an anti-junction transistor, similar behavior. The uh, trigger threshold here is in the range of 6.5 volt. I've calculated this is a type, uh, what is it, N13T1, and it has a um, trigger voltage of 6.1 volt, which is the Sina diode. 6.1 volt plus an offset voltage it's approximately 0.4 volt at 150 ohm so 6.5 volt should hear the trigger and we have a, here an RC combination so we have a little bit more than 6.5 volt I unsoldered this resistor the 150 ohms and now I have a full voltage swing as we can expect which is necessary to examine this uh, circuit here By the way, I had to switch off the uh, VFO by selecting a channel where there's no crystal involved. The um, LED, however, is not flashing because we have a stable, obviously stable condition. The under junction transistor is not connected and I feed in a, a stable voltage. So we have no trigger condition for this LED. It's a little bit annoying, but uh, it is. It is as it is. I have a tone generator, one kilohertz output. The output is connected here to the input, to the connection here, the 10K resistor we added. And here we have the scope connected. And we see the output signal. It is overdriven. And when I reduce the amplitude, you can see it goes down more or less to to a sine wave and with a small screwdriver I can use this one we can change the offset that's what what we wanted to see it's not a perfect amplifier but I think it's it's important to have the indication that there is a linear amplification that there are no uh, jumps no steps or thresholds the amplification of this uh, FET is more or less linear and now we can measure the maximum and minimum voltage. We are a little bit overdriven, that's necessary to measure the maximum and minimum voltage. It is shown here with vertical measurement. We have 2 volt per division, that's a zero line, 2, 4, 6, nearly 8 volt maximum. What we have here 7.76 and minimum minimum is 2.3 volt. This is 2.3 and this is 7.76, 7.8. These are the two voltages. And when we calculate the mean value, 7.7 .7 plus 2.3 is rather precise 10 volt. A little bit more, 10 volt divided by 2 is 5, 5.1 volt. This is the center voltage, the mean voltage, which is for the bias zero, or for uh, not not bias zero, sorry, for the uh, input, input zero, yes, input zero voltage on the gate. And you see here we can adjust, of course, the bias in one direction that the minimum voltage drops down to 2 volt, but then the maximum voltage is not 
not perfect. Okay, I can increase it, but we shouldn't overdrive it. So I think this this setting here is okay. 2.1, 2.2 volt minimum, and 7.7, 7, .7, 7 .8 volt maximum. So again, we have 10 volt and 5 volt as the uh, mean value. When we have a low input voltage, we can see that the mean voltage is in the range between what is it? 5.3 and 6.3. It's 5.5, 5.7, 5.6 volt mean value. It's a little bit higher than the specified 4.7 according to the um, service manual, but I think that that is okay because we do not need a very high voltage uh, swing to tune the VCO. So we can leave it in this position. Will I increase the signal? Yes, that is okay. We can leave it. Now a short demonstration of the bad pot we replaced by the new one. This was a pot which had the workaround with the RF game pot <coughs> in parallel. We have a scale R times 100, so 2 is 200 and 5 is 500. And when I adjust the pot to lower values, it's linear, but here we have a... Okay, now it is working linear to the end. Ah, okay, and at the end we have a problem with the contact. I start with zero. When I go fully clockwise to this to the zero position, we have a hundred ohms or so, and we have zero, hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Maybe the pot is better now due to uh, movement. Anyhow, this pot was bad, and uh, we we replaced it. Now we are at the end of part 4. We thoroughly checked the PLL board, the PLL circuit. We didn't find any additional fault. The only problem was the pot. While the hero who made this modification with the RF game pot in parallel to this bad pot didn't simply swap or replace the bad pot by a new one. I don't understand, sorry. But uh, it's not my task to understand everything on this world. Well, in part 5 we will continue our work with the alignment. Now I think we can finalize the alignment. I did not uh, align the board, the uh, PLL board very thoroughly, especially the setting of the coil of the oscillator. We have to adjust a lot of uh, voltages for the uh, vary caps which are in parallel and switch by the range switch. There are uh, voltages uh, which control these uh, diodes, these vary caps. I will do this first. Maybe I have to readjust the uh, PLL board again a little bit, so it's not uh, very useful now to uh, do a, a fine-tuning work on the PLL board. Maybe I would have to do it a second time. Don't like this. So, stay healthy, stay tuned. See you on this channel.